Saturn's moon Enceladus is an icy globe that blows strange geysers of ice particles into space. Scientists found that these geysers contain unexpected amounts of methane, and methane is usually produced by living organisms. Here are the details. Salon reports that researchers believe the surprising amount of methane blowing out of Saturn's moon Enceladus indicates that living organisms might be active inside the icy globe. The researchers looked at data recorded in 2005 by the Cassini space probe when it flew through huge geysers of ice particles blowing out of cracks in the moon's icy shell. They published their research in the journal Nature Astronomy in July. That study shows the geysers consist of dihydrogen, water ice, and a surprising amount of methane. Methane is common on Earth and is usually produced by bacteria, but can also be created by geological processes. The study used mathematical models to calculate how probable it would be for non-living mechanisms to produce so much methane. The calculations show there is a real chance Enceladus has billions of living organisms that are producing methane. However, scientists are also interested in what types of geochemical processes could create so much methane if it turns out that the methane is being created by such non-biological means. So, although most scientists believe the methane inside Enceladus is probably not created by millions of living organisms, the alternative would also pose some fascinating questions, as it would require some very alien geological processes. Scientists may have finally solved the mystery of the tiger stripes on Saturn's moon Enceladus. According to a study published in Nature Astronomy, the Cassini probe first detected the four strange fractures on the moon's north pole when the spacecraft orbited around Saturn 15 years ago. According to the researchers, the tiger stripes are about 130 kilometers long, with fracture lines running parallel to one another spaced at 35 kilometers apart. Lead author Doug Hemingway at the Carnegie Institute for Science says that the fissures constantly blow out water and ice, unlike any other formation known to exist on icy moons. According to the research team, the tiger stripes and the formation's strange behavior is caused by the moon's eccentric orbit around Saturn. Because Enceladus's distance to Saturn fluctuates, planetary gravity stretches and flexes the moon. This effect generates the heat that keeps Enceladus from freezing solid. The gravitational force is so powerful that it changes the shape of the moon, with the resulting stress creating the first tiger stripe on Enceladus. As the moon's surface ocean erupts through the fissure, the jets of water then freeze and fall back on the moon. The weight of the accumulated ice and snow puts pressure on the nearby ice sheet and breaks the crust on parallel lines. Those fractures become the moon's stripes. Scientists have found evidence that increases the chances of alien life being found on Saturn's sixth largest moon, an icy ball called Enceladus. NASA scientists used data from the Cassini space probe to see what new information they could find about Enceladus. They went digging through detailed infrared images and say they've now found strong evidence of areas of fresh ice in the moon's northern hemisphere. Fresh ice drastically increases the odds of finding alien life on any planet. This fresh ice is thought to have originated in the moon's interior, and scientists think there must be some kind of mechanism by which the fresh ice could have emerged to cover patches of the moon's ancient ice surface. Some theorize that these fresh ice patches in the north formed in much the same way as similar patches formed in the south by being blown through a series of giant cracks in the moon's surface. These giant cracks in the south look like tiger stripes. Their data were studied a few years ago. According to the researchers, the tiger stripes are about 130 kilometers long, with fracture lines running parallel to one another, spaced at 35 kilometers apart. Lead author Doug Hemingway at the Carnegie Institute for Science says that the fissures constantly blow out water and ice, unlike any other formation known to exist on icy moons. According to the research team, the tiger stripes and the formation's strange behavior is caused by the moon's eccentric orbit around Saturn. Because Enceladus's distance to Saturn fluctuates, planetary gravity stretches and flexes the moon. This effect generates the heat that keeps Enceladus from freezing solid. The gravitational force is so powerful that it changes the shape of the moon, with the resulting stress creating the first tiger stripe on Enceladus. As the moon's surface ocean erupts through the fissure, the jets of water then freeze and fall back on the moon. The weight of the accumulated ice and snow puts pressure on the nearby ice sheet and breaks the crust on parallel lines. 
Those fractures become the moon's stripes. Some scientists theorize that the areas of fresh ice in the northern hemisphere were formed in a similar way as the southern fresh ice areas around the tiger stripes. However, that theory would be hard to prove, as the Cassini space probe that recorded the data stopped functioning in 2017. Following up on his plans to transport 1 million people to Mars by 2050, Elon Musk's company SpaceX has now declared that it will also send hundreds of satellites to Mars to provide the colonists with space internet. SpaceX is currently building a Starlink mega constellation of small communication satellites around Earth and has already launched around 800 of these satellites into low Earth orbit. This mega constellation of satellites will eventually cover every part of Earth, and Elon Musk said it will give all people on Earth access to low-cost broadband internet. According to a recent interview with Time magazine, the company now plans to build the same mega constellation around Mars to provide the one million future citizens of Mars with space-based internet. Shotwell said the Starlink concept would also create a robust communication link between Mars and Earth, providing an interplanetary internet bridge. This ambitious satellite plan for Mars is typical of Elon Musk, who is spending big money on creating the rockets and spaceships required to get people to Mars. The Voyager spacecraft have found that space is more dense outside the solar system. Here is what you need to know. NASA's Voyager 2 crossed into interstellar space in November of 2018 after a 41-year voyage, but its mission is far from over. According to research published in the journal Astrophysical Letters, as Voyager 2 moves farther from our solar system, the density of space is increasing. This supports findings from Voyager 1, which entered interstellar space at a different location in 2012. The solar system's theoretical boundary is called the heliopause. An article published on NASA's website describes the heliopause as the place where the solar wind, which emanates from our sun, is no longer strong enough to push back interstellar winds from the surrounding stars. Inside is the heliosphere, a huge bubble of the sun's magnetic influence made by the solar wind that extends far beyond Pluto. This bubble was thought to be shaped like a comet with a rounded leading edge and tail as it orbits the Milky Way. The heliospheric nose is situated between the two voyagers. But a study published in the journal Nature Astronomy in March using data from NASA missions suggests the heliosphere may in fact be shaped like a deflated croissant. A 3D simulation created using the data shows a curving central bulge with two jets caused by the solar magnetic field shooting away from it. The authors of the study write that the increase in density detected by the Voyager spacecraft could be due to interstellar magnetic fields becoming stronger as they approach and drape over the heliopause. Another theory is that the material blown by the interstellar wind might slow down and build up as it approaches the heliopause. More data is needed from the two voyagers to try to untangle this mystery. However, as the authors of the study note, it is not certain whether the voyagers will be able to operate far enough to distinguish between these two classes of models. Voyager mission team members estimate the spacecraft's transmitters will go quiet in the late 2020s or perhaps in the 2030s. And then they will be alone, out there in the vastness of interstellar space, until their next close encounter with a cosmic object 40,000 years from now. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.